Hello everyone. We are going to do 2-3 today using deductive reasoning to verify conjectures. So a couple of times ago we learned about inductive reasoning and if you remember inductive reasoning is when you look at patterns and you try and make conjectures. Deductive reasoning is a little different and we'll talk about that today. There are two laws with deductive reasoning. The first is the law of detachment and the second is the law of syllogism. So we will go over both of those today. The law, uh, uh, our objective is to apply these two laws in, uh, in our logical reasoning. So first of all, let's define what deductive reasoning is. As opposed to inductive reasoning where you're looking at patterns, deductive reasoning is a process of using logic to draw conclusions from facts, definitions, and properties. Our law of detachment is if P arrow Q is a true statement, and P is true, then Q is true. And this seems rather obvious, um, and, and we'll look at a couple of examples. One will be a valid use of this law, and one will not be a valid use of this law in just a minute. Let's go over the law of syllogism. The law of syllogism is if P arrow Q and Q arrow R are true statements, then P arrow R is a true statement. Okay, so let's look at a couple of examples of the law of detachment. So I have two examples written down here. Here we have example one. Example one says, if a student passes his classes, then the student can play sports. We are told that Ramon passed his classes so our conjecture is that Roman is allowed, sorry, Ramon is allowed to play sports. So in our example here, we have the student passing the classes is our P statement. And then we have the student playing sports is the Q statement. Passing the classes is P, playing sports is the Q. Ramon did pass his classes, so we're back to P again. Therefore, Ra Ramon can play sports is our Q statement. So as you can see, we're going from P to Q and then back to P and then back to Q again. And so this is a valid use, oops, L, I, D, a valid use of this law. So let's take a look at example two. If you are tardy three times, you must go to detention. Billy was in detention. Conjecture, Billy was tardy three times. So in this case, we have you are tardy three times is our P statement. You must go to detention is our Q statement. Then we're told that Billy was in detention. We're back to Q again. And then he was, so he must have been tardy three times. So in this case, what's happening is we have P arrow Q is true. Q is true. Therefore, P must be true. And that is not a valid use of this law. So this is not valid. because you can't go backwards like that. It's not a valid use of the law detachment. Okay, let's take a look at another, the other law, the law of syllogism. I have one example here for you. 
If you fly from Texas to California, then you travel from the central, central to Pacific time zone. If you travel from central to, to Pacific time zone, then you gain two hours. So here's my conjecture. So let's first break it down. So first of all, our P statement is fly from Texas to California. So I'm going to write that here. P statement is fly Texas to California. Then we have our Q statement, you travel from central to Pacific time zone. So Q is travel central to Pacific. And then we have a new one thrown in. Um, notice what's happening is it goes back to traveling from central to Pacific, so we're back to Q again. And then we have a new one that's put in, which we'll call R. You gain two hours, so that's R. R is gain two hours. So let's um, analyze this a little bit. The first sentence, if you travel from Texas to California, then you travel from Central to the Pacific. So that one is P arrow Q. So far, so good. The second sentence, if you travel from Central to Pacific, then you gain two hours, is starting at Q again, arrow in our new one, R. So that means that our conjecture should start with P and move straight to R. So let's see if it does that. If you fly from Texas to California, so that's your P, so we have P, arrow, then you gain two hours, so we're back to our R here, gain two hours. And that is a valid use of the law of syllogism. So when you're trying to figure out if it's valid or not, I suggest that you write the three things down and then also map it out using those to see if it's valid or not. Sometimes these sentences might be flip-flopped around. We'll look at a couple of more um, complicated ones in class time. But this is a simpler one, and this is a valid use of the law of syllogism. Okay, so that's it for today's lesson, um, and I will see you in class.